This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and look at the other aspect to the analysis of our financial position, which is looking at solvency. Solvency is like the longer term version of liquidity. Liquidity is focusing on cash, your ability to pay off your debts as they fall due. Solvency is looking more at your ability to pay off your longer term debt, such as bank loans and debentures. Okay. So again, we can go through there and support the movements in our debt, whether debt has gone up or whether debt has gone down, uh, by simple explanation. Okay. You now debt has gone up because we have borrowed more. Okay. The debt has gone down because we have repaid the debt in the current year. But you can then supplement that with some form of ratio analysis. So what we've got, okay, we've mentioned already that solvency is the long-term ability. So we can look more at the ratios now, your gearing. There's two ways of measuring gearing, which is first of all, your debt over your capital employed. So the level of debt based upon the total amount of funds invested within the business equity plus net debt okay so your gearing here is either your debt divided by equity plus debt multiplied by 100 percent, or as a percentage debt over equity okay so there's no rules as to how you calculate that ratio if it appears in the exam normally the examiner will tell you which one to use so that there is consistency by all students across the exam. Okay, so if it's debt over capital employed, make sure you know that capital employed is equity plus net debt. Okay, uh, so in terms of that gearing figure, it may have gone down, it may have gone up. Okay, so gearing goes down if you've gone through and issued new shares because that's going to increase your equity uh, and therefore reduce gearing. Or because you repaid your borrowing, so that the lower debt figure on the top, equity is similar to last year, so therefore that figure has gone down. Okay. If gearing has gone up, usually it's because you've got increased borrowings. Just be careful if your borrowings go up, that puts the dividends of the shareholders at risk, so that increased risk can have an impact on the market value of a business. But that brings in all your Medigliani and Miller theories and traditional theories on gearing, which is way off syllabus with regards to financial reporting and is more appropriate financial management. But if you've done financial management, you can bring these aspects in. Okay, it will get you credit. Uh, and likewise, what you've got there is if your gearing's gone up because you've borrowed more, it's not just more risk to the shareholders, it's more risk as well to the lender. And therefore, they might not wish to go through there. And grant you more borrowings. Okay. So gearing, debt over equity, debt over capital employed, all based upon that, is it your book values? Okay. Uh, one point just to finish before we, we move on. Uh, an increase in gearing isn't necessarily bad news. Uh, if the gearing ratio is still relatively low, so you've only just recently started to take out debt, then that can be quite good. Okay. So even though your gearing is slowly increasing, that's beneficial from a financial management perspective because your debt is cheaper than your equity. Um, because we're using cheaper debt to fund the business, we get cheaper issue costs, uh, tax saving on the interest. That means that there's more cash within the business and if there's more cash, then the value of the entity will begin to increase. So an increase in gearing, most of the time in financial reporting, it's bad news. Uh, financial management and increase in gearing can be good news provided that the debt and the gearing are, are still at low levels. Okay, So gearing is looking at your solvency from a statement of financial position perspective, but we can then also link it into a performance profitability perspective by looking at interest cover. So what you've got on your interest cover, it looks at the ability of the business to pay the interest out of the profits the business is making. So if you've got plenty of profits and interest is going up, then that's not too big a risk. But if interest is going up because you're borrowing more and profits are falling, then your interest cover is going to get smaller because you have less profits to pay off the higher interest and that can be quite risky. 
So to measure it, uh, be careful. You take your profit before interest and tax because that is then where your interest is paid from and divide that by your interest payable. So effectively, your finance costs. Okay. Uh, and then what you've got there, if the interest cover's gone up, that's good, isn't it? Because your interest payments are a little bit more secure. Uh, there's more scope and more profits that even if they fall, there's still enough to cover the interest. But if it's gone down, you know, there's a risk there that you can't cover your interest. If you can't pay the interest, you may then default on the loan and that loan can be recalled. That's a massive risk for the business. Okay, very significant in terms of reputational damage and your ability to raise future debt finance. Do just note, we mentioned there that this is focusing on performance and profitability. There's an issue, not an issue. It's just like a, a negative side. Profit doesn't equal cash, does it? So you've got to look more at your cash flow statement, your statement of cash flows to see whether or not your interest paid, what you actually pay is covered by the operating cash flows that you generate. Because it could be that it might not look as healthy from your performance perspective and your statement of profit or loss, but on a cash basis, maybe you're very effective at converting profits into cash. And that therefore goes through there and gives you more comfort in terms of your interest covered from a cash flow perspective. Okay, so just bear in mind, you could think about things from a cash perspective as opposed to just a purely accruals perspective when it comes to your performance.